Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, and welcome to the second annual Will It Eggnog. Cheers and welcome back to the second annual Will It Eggnog Taste Test Extravaganza. If you are not familiar with last year's Will It Eggnog video, I encourage you to pause right now and go watch that video. It's linked down below and I'll also just put it up in the top corner of the video as well. But for those of you who are too lazy to go back and rewatch last year's quick recap, I am a massive fan of eggnog, non-alcoholic, alcoholic. I love it all. I am just, I love eggnog. There's no two ways about it. I've had eggnog with uh, several different cocktails, several different concoctions, lots of different combinations. And I was determined to just find what are the weirdest things that we can put in eggnog and find out the ultimate answer to the question, will it eggnog? Will the cocktails be good or will they be absolutely disgusting? What we learned last year, I think, is that we took it a little bit too easy. All of the eggnogs, or for the most part, ended up being incredibly delicious until the final one, which was eggnog and tequila. We decided to double down this year, go a little bit more obscure and try to just get worse and worse and just again try to make them not as enjoyable because in all honestly it worked out way too well last year and we can't have that in this year's edition so just like last year we we're going to try to start somewhat traditional and then quickly devolve from there so without further ado that is the recap i hope you enjoy i hope you will subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up share it around to all of your friends to spread the eggnog christmas cheer uh, and we are going to go ahead and get started so first up is going to be the most traditional of the eggnogs. We heard you loud and clear last year. Everyone wanted to see Fireball. I think that's actually gonna be pretty good because whiskey and eggnog or bourbon and eggnog is one of the traditional ways to have eggnog. It's one of my favorites. It is delicious. Add cinnamon to that. I think it's just gonna be a delicious spiced eggnog. They did not have Fireball, so we actually have bird dog hot cinnamon, but a shot of that in here or one of these bottles in here, fill the rest up with eggnog. We'll see how it goes. It smells pretty good. Oh man, the cinnamon is incredibly strong. Um, it's not terrible. It's not my favorite. Just like with Fireball, the flavor of the cinnamon is so overpowering. The eggnog actually does a nice job of cutting it a little bit. I would probably mix a little bit more eggnog just to cut that cinnamon spice slightly. But if you like cinnamon spice drinks and you like eggnog, I think you would really enjoy this. It's actually pretty delicious and pretty refreshing. Definitely a holiday must try. Next up, number two, another thing you may have noticed a change for this year. We are using smaller glasses with ice so that it is a higher concentration of alcohol to eggnog. Again, making sure the alcohol is the flavor that's coming through, not necessarily the eggnog overpowering it. Another top suggestion after last year that we had to try was gin. Instead of a gin and tonic, we are having a gin and Saint Nick. Cheers to you all. I cannot imagine that this will taste good. It smells absolutely horrible. <laughs> It's actually not that bad. The gin is pretty strong. If you like gin, you like that like juniper bite, it mixes pretty well with the eggnog. I feel like juniper is kind of a wintry taste. I feel like gin and tonic is a common summer drink, but I'm honestly shocked. I thought this was going to be miserable, similar to tequila last year. And although we tried to make these as horrible as possible, going downhill with number two immediately, this is actually surprisingly good. Uh, I would say I would recommend giving it a try. If you are a fan of gin, you wanna try a new cocktail. The Gin and Saint Nick is another holiday must try. I can't believe that's good. <laughs> Moving on to number three, a craze that could not be ignored this year is the canned cocktail craze. They have taken the market by storm. They are all the rage had to bring it into the Will It Eggnog Challenge. It actually looks kind of holiday -y. I don't know if you can see the red tint to the drink coming through, but we decided to make what I'm calling a Russian reindeer instead of a Moscow mule. Uh, this is a bramble mule 
canned cocktail ready to drink. It is fizzed up vodka with raspberry, ginger, and hibiscus. I feel like those are very Christmassy flavors. So we filled that to about here and then topped it off with some eggnog. We'll see how it goes. Again, the smell test, it smells good. It's like the sweetness of the eggnog and then like the fruity aftertones, just like a ginger fizzy cocktail with eggnog. I can't picture in my head or my mouth. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> that is so good. That's stupid how good that is. Holy crap. This was one of the ones that we were like, surely this will have to be gross. And this is so good. I mean, next year we're just gonna have to go all out with just some horrible liquors, or maybe I just really like eggnog way too much. This is this is the best one by far. This is phenomenal, and I cannot believe how good this is. I'm gonna keep this one off to the side to finish for myself. Uh, if you can make yourself a Russian Rudolph, 10 out of 10, must recommend, a holiday must try, this is delicious. Number four, I am starting to lose faith that any of these will be as disgusting as I thought they would be in my brain. Honestly, I thought gin was gonna take the cake with just being absolutely horrible. The Russian Rudolph was a huge surprise. Uh, but next up, we have what we are calling a St. Nicholas Spritzer or a Santa Spritzer. Uh, and this is basically your traditional white wine spritzer. Basically half the glass with white wine, a little bit of seltzer water, top off the rest with eggnog. One that I would imagine would be pretty gross, we're using a Sauvignon Blanc, uh, but with how everything else is gone, I don't know what to believe anymore, so we'll give this a try. It smells like wine and a little bit of eggnog, which does not smell appetizing. It's bad. Uh, it's not horrible. It's not as bad as the tequila, that's for sure. But it basically, similar to how the tequila hits you where it was just like a thick, creamy tequila taste was all you got from it. Um, this just tastes like thick white wine with like a creamy, sweet aftertaste, which is not what you want in white wine. I'm no expert, but I don't think that's what folks are looking for. Honestly, it tastes like milky grape juice is what it tastes like. And that's absolutely disgusting. Again, not horrible. It's got the sweetness of the eggnog, so it's bearable. If you told me I had to finish this, I would do it and I wouldn't need to gag. Like I could at least get through it, but it's not enjoyable. Uh, would not recommend trying unless you wanna torture yourself a little bit. But like I said, just tastes like, like Concord grape juice or like Welsh's grape juice. When you used to get that as a kid, mix that with eggnog, like half grape juice, half eggnog. If you can picture that in your head, that's pretty much exactly what this tastes like. And last but not least, we are moving on to number five. Uh, this has not gone nearly as poorly as I would have expected, similar to last year. So before we jump into number five, I am going to encourage you to drop in the comments below what liquors we should do next year to try to make this more of a challenge, a little bit more unbearable. The hardest thing I will say is finding the liquors that we want in small bottles. Like we have, we had absinthe as one of the things we were gonna look for, or malort. It's hard to find those in little bottles. There is still a full bottle of peppermint schnapps in our bar left over from last year's edition as well. But if you have recommendations or you wanna lend us some alcohol, again, drop it down in the comments below and we will happily try to include it in next year's video. Moving on to number five, a top recommendation after last year's video was to do some Malibu rum, some coconut rum, which again, I think part of the reason I picture that is so disgusting is just because I, I myself, like many college students, have such terrible, terrible memories of Malibu rum from the college years. One of the first alcohols you gravitate towards to uh, because it is so sweet and so warm and welcoming and then you drink way too much of it and get horribly ill and can never stand the sight of the bottle or the smell of that coconut ever again. But the reading the fine print is important because we bought 10 of these little bottles uh, and it is not coconut rum, it is watermelon rum. Honestly, I think maybe the coconut would have been better. That kind of flavor seems like it would go better with eggnog, perhaps. I don't see watermelon going great, uh, but we have the eggnog here to try to make it a little bit more painful. I'm gonna put a little floater on top, a little bit of extra watermelon rum on there. Sprinkle it around, make sure we get plenty of that flavor with the sip. Uh, and here we go to number five. Smells like fresh watermelon. <sighs> oh. 
oh, it's not, the flavor isn't as bad as like biting as the white wine, but man, that is so artificial and sweet and just like tacky in your mouth. Uh, very watermelony, like watermelon candy, not like real watermelon. Uh, and then again, the cream eggnoggy flavor underneath that actually helps cut through the Malibu, which makes it a little bit more bearable. None of these were nearly as disgusting as the tequila. I'll give them that. Uh, but this is definitely a holiday no-go. This is pretty disgusting. Not as disgusting as we would have liked to see with number five, but definitely not doing any favors. So that is the lineup of five. I'm a little disappointed that none of these were as disgusting as I would have hoped or what I would have hoped to have given you. So I think the only thing left to do here at the end of the video is to do a waterfall of all five back to back. We've been saving them off to the sides and just try to combine all of the flavors in one deliciously excellent holiday favorite. So give us a moment to assemble all of these and we will be right back. All right, we are going all five back to back, starting with the cinnamon whiskey, moving on to the gin and Saint Nick, moving on to the Russian Rudolph, moving on to the Saint Nick Spritzer or the Santa Spritzer, I think is what we called that one. Uh, we didn't have a name for the Malibu to finish it all off. We'll go ahead and call that one Christmas Island maybe, or Christmas Island boys. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine that these are gonna combine well, but again, this is what you came here to see. I hope you will subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up, share it around to all of your friends. And like I said, let me know in the comments below what liquors you wanna see us work into next year's video because we have plenty of time to plan and plenty of time to try to accumulate some of these rarer finds. But uh, thank you as always for joining. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Here we go. Oh God, back to back is rough. Oh, a nice little sweet flavor in the middle. All oh, the wine. Oh, cheers all. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. I hope you enjoyed the video. Happy holidays from my house to yours and we will see you soon. Cheers.